Hey everyone, welcome to Wicode. In this video, we're going to learn how to connect a node server to a MongoDB database using Docker and Docker Compose. So here's a little demonstration of what we're going to build. Here's our Docker Compose file, which conserves or consists of our node server and also our MongoDB database. What I have here is I ran Docker Compose up, so both our containers are up and running. We can even see print to the console here connected to Mongo server started. And now if we make a curl to our node server, which is at based on this env file, localhost 7005, what we get is some data from our MongoDB database. So we have the server, which connects to Mongo, and then returns us that data. But so this is what we're gonna build. All right, so to start off, we're just gonna have an empty directory right here, or an empty project. And to begin, we're gonna set up our environment variables. So I'm gonna do all this inside a file called .env. And so the, all these environment variables will be used by Docker Compose, to set the location of our Mongo server, our node server, and also carry out some initial setup, which we'll see more on later. But first, let's add our database variables. So these variables are the port, location, or host of where our Mongo Docker container will be in the Docker network. We also create a collection called user, which we're gonna insert some data into. And now let's add some more environment variables. And these are actually gonna be used by the Mongo Docker image to add some sort of initialization. So these variables right here, these names are very important and they have to be, let me see if I can zoom in one more, they have to be these names. So these we can name whatever, but these are actually used by the MongoDB Docker image to do some initialization. Specifically, we add some authentication. So we have a root username and a root password. And we also have an initial or default database, which we're gonna call MyDB. We'll see more on how these work as we start coding, but the final environment variable we're just gonna have is our server host and port. So this is the host name on the Docker network, and this is the port on the Docker network. But so now let's write the code for our node server. And so to do this, we're first just gonna, let's create a directory in here called server, because we're gonna have one for our server, and we're gonna have another one for all our Mongo stuff. And let's go into the server directory, and in here, we're just gonna initialize this as an ES6 project by running npm init ES6-y. And we're also gonna install nodemon as a development dependency so we can do some live code updates. And then inside our package.json file, what we're gonna do is just create a start script and we're gonna set the main entry point to be source-server.js, so this main key right here. And then scrolling down, we're gonna create a script called start all that's gonna do is run our entry point or main point right here using nodemon. So this dot here is, this, is equivalent to what we place in this main key. But so that's some just simple setup. Now let's install something called a MongoDB driver. So to connect a node application to MongoDB, we need a MongoDB driver. And a MongoDB driver is essentially software that manages connecting to MongoDB. And we can install it from NPM and all it's called is Mongo db, so npmi mongodb. And so now that we have our driver installed, let's import some packages and also set up some environment variables. And we're gonna do that, of course, inside our source and server.js file. So this is where we're gonna do all our logic to connect to Mongo. And inside here, I'm just gonna paste in some code. And so let's go over this. So first what we do is we import a Mongo client from mongodb. And essentially a Mongo client is an object that connects to a Mongo server. Then we import the HTTP module, and we're gonna use this to create a server to respond to requests, like you saw in the beginning of the video when I ran that curl command. Then we just have a lot of environment variables, and these will all be set through Docker Compose using this env file that we created. But now let's write the code to connect our Mongo client to our Mongo server. And once again, I'm just gonna paste this in, and I'll just let you know what's going on here. So below here, I'm just gonna paste in something called a connection URI. And what a connection URI is, is it's basically a URI that contains the connection information to connect a Mongo client to a Mongo server. And so we can see it, it's right here. And it has the protocol, which is MongoDB, has then the database username and password, as we supplied some authentication, and then an at symbol, and then the database host and port. And what we do then is we pass this connection URI to our Mongo client, which will connect to our Mongo server. And then we just have our database and collection. 
which were also environment variables. And now let's create, so we've got that connection URI set up. Let's just create a main function that will be used to run or connect to Mongo. So it's just a function right here called main. And all it does is we can see in a try catch, we try and connect to Mongo. If we do, we log out, connect to Mongo. Then we create an HTTP server. And whenever we receive a request to the server, we find one from our collection right here. And then we just send it to the user as a JSON string. And then we're just gonna run this main function, of course. And I'm just gonna paste this in. And all we will do is run main. And if it's successful, we run server started. And if not, we say something went wrong. But that's all the logic to our, or that's basically all the code we're gonna be writing. Now let's create this node, our, our node Docker image. And of course, we're gonna be doing this with a node Docker file. So I'm just gonna call it Docker file. And let me paste in what we're gonna be using here. And essentially, it's just gonna be node version 20 using Alpine Linux as the base image. We're gonna create a directory inside the container called dash server, or called server at the root directory. And this means that any run, CMD, copy, uh, commands like that will be executed in this server directory. So then we're gonna copy over our package and pa package.json and package.lock.json into the server file. Then we're gonna install these dependencies and then run our start script. But that's all it is to using Node. Next, what we wanna do is create a Mongo Docker file. And so we're gonna do this in our database folder. I'm just gonna create another one called Docker file. And for this, we're gonna use Mongo version 7.07 as the base image, but that's really all there is here. But something that we also wanna do is add a creation script to add data to our default database that Docker will create using this environment variable here. So this Mongo image right here will use these environment variables to set up authentication and create a default database. Of course, this is all done under the hood by making sure that you use these names exactly. But so creation scripts, that I mentioned a bit ago are basically shell or JavaScript files placed inside a folder called, let me paste the name in here, a folder called docker entry point initdb.d in the image. And so creation scripts, what they're used for is database initialization, such as authentication, uh, collection creation, data insertion, things like that, which is all the stuff we're gonna be doing. And so to add something to this, that directory in the image, we want to run the command copy, and we're gonna copy a file called init.js into this folder in the image. So now let's create this JavaScript file, which is called init.js. And inside here, what we're just gonna do is we're gonna create a collection called user, and then we're gonna insert a user into it with the username witcode or witceptor, which is my Chrome extension if you wanna check it out in the Chrome store, and then the best Chrome extensions password, and um, then we have email, some other stuff like that. And you may be wondering, this DB object right here, because it just seems like it comes out of nowhere, what it's done is it's it's basically the Mongo database object used inside the Mongo DB shell. So if you connect to the Mongo database, you have a DB object. That's essentially what this is here. And we'll see that in action in a bit. But now we've basically got all that stuff set up. So let's start working with Docker Compose. And we're gonna create this at the top level called docker-compose.yaml. And what we're gonna do initially in here is we're gonna create some volumes. So at the top level, we're gonna use this volumes key and just indent this one. And so what this top level volumes key does here is it lets us configure named volumes. And this name property here sets a custom name for the volume. Now when we run the command docker compose up for the first time, it will create these volumes and then these volumes will be reused when the command is ran again. This volume right here, server v node modules, will handle our node modules folder and this database v volume will be used to persist our MongoDB data even when we remove the container. And real quick, let me just mention something about node modules with Docker. I actually have a video where I go in depth into this, but essentially this the node modules folder can be problematic for Docker if it contains packages with binaries that are specific to certain operating systems. In other words, certain packages will install different files depending on the operating system of the computer. This can cause issues if you're developing an application with Docker, as the Docker container doesn't always use the same operating system as the host computer. So for example, here I'm using Mac OS, but inside our Docker container, we're using Alpine Linux. And so of course, if we install packages that contain 
or if we install packages from npm that contain specific binaries for Mac OS, and then we copy them over into the Docker container, this can cause um, some issues. But so this volume here will essentially handle this for us. But now let's create, now that we've got that out of the way, let's create our, our node service. So I'm just gonna, at the top level here, we have a volumes at the bottom now. Now we have a service called server, and of course this will be our node server. We name the image server version 1.0.0. Note that if both the image and build declarations, so we have image here and build, if both of those are specified, then the image declaration specifies the name and tag of the Docker image. So because we both have image and build, this will be the name and tag of our image. Then we have container name right here, which will create a name for the container, which of course is coming from our environment variables. Um, so it's coming from our .env file right here, specifically server host. Then we have our build declaration right here, which is basically saying, giving the location of our Docker file, which it's inside the server directory and it's called Docker file. We have our env declaration here, which will load our environment variables into the image. So this line right here will load all our environment variables into all this stuff right here. Now back in Docker Compose, and then our volume declarations. This will copy over all our code into the container. So our whole server directory, all this stuff here, will be copied into the image. However, we don't, we override the node modules with this volume, which, so essentially we copy everything over but we do not copy over our node modules because these here are specific to Mac OS. And then we have this depends on key right here, or declaration, which makes it so the node service will wait until our database service has started. Not necessarily that our database is ready for connections and everything, but just that the service has started itself. So now we've got our node server up. Let's use, let's create our database or our Mongo service. And let me fix the indentation right here. So now we've got our node server service, and then we have our database service. So we create a service called database. We have an image called database version 1.0.0. We have our container name, the location of our Docker file. We load in our environment variables, and then we map a port on our local host machine to the port in the container, which also I forgot to mention we do here too. So we can curl localhost port server port in our env file. So port 7005 on our machine to the container and back in here. And then we have our volume, which is mapped, which we created here. And it's mapped to the location dash data dash DB in the Mongo image. And this location is important. If we want to persist data stored inside our Mongo image, then we need to create a volume mapped to this location because this is where Mongo stores or persists its data. But that's all it takes to get this whole thing set up. All we need to do now is just run the command. So let me go back to the top level here. We just need to run the command docker compose, and then we're gonna supply an env file, which will be .env. And what this does, this flag right here, will fill in this environment variable. So anything where we have a dollar sign in these brackets, it'll fill in with what's in here. But we just have to specify that. And then we run up. Now we can just see everything running. Oh, and what I have here is a conflict, and this is because I ran this earlier. So I'm just going to see what we have here. And it was Mongo C. So I'm going to run docker stop Mongo C. And then I'm going to remove this container. Now let's try running this command again. And of course we have server C as, as well. So I'm going to do docker stop server C and then remove this container. And once again, this is all just because I didn't close everything down from our demonstration. But now if we run this again, we can see connected to Mongo server started. I probably should have listed out the point or the port and the location that it started to. But let me show you something cool too, is because we have our volume and we're using NodeMon as well, uh, we can get some live code updates. So we say like, hello there. And we can see that up here has been logged. Of course, there's tons of Mongo logs and stuff, but we get some live updates. So let me just type in something else. When we refresh that, we can see some more updates. But anyway, let's go over let me just show the final thing, just make sure that our curl is working. So if we run curl localhost, I think it's 7005, and we get it back. So that's the data right here that was inserted into Mongo. We're querying it, and our node server is contacting MongoDB, and we're getting this back. But so this is my video on how to connect a node server to Mongo using Docker Compose. I want to thank you for liking and subscribing, and consider downloading my Chrome extension called Witceptor. 
link in the description. Besides that, leave questions in the comments if you have any, and hope to see you in the next one. Have a good one.